Arc Survival Ascended server clusters. We're going to have a look at how to set up an unofficial cluster and the options available for allowing or denying transfers. I'll run through a quick description at the beginning where I show off quickly how all the clusters are set up, otherwise I will show how the clusters are currently set up on my computer at the end. To set up your own cluster is actually quite simple. All you need to do is add the cluster ID to your server's launch arguments and give the cluster a name. However, if your installs are in separate locations, you will want to specify a common cluster save folder so that they can talk to each other. And this is done by adding the cluster directory override to the launch arguments. If you do not have this, you will not be able to transfer and you will be forced to create a new character upon loading in. You can, however, have multiple instances of the game running only on one install of the server files. If you use the alt save directory name argument, this will allow each of the instances to have their own save folder within a single server installation. The only restriction here is that they have a common set of configuration files and any changes that you make will affect every instance you are running. You will have the option to disable or enable both downloads and uploads on your server for each of the survivors, dinos and or items, as well as an overall option for disabling things altogether and these all go in the game user settings.ini file. Beyond this, you can also apply timers to slow down the re-uploads of dinosaurs, or you can place expiration timers on the survivors, dinos and items which have been uploaded. To disable the expiry timers, all you need to do is apply a value of zero. On a side note, I did have a lot of trouble getting a mod map to communicate with the island when the installs were in separate install folders. Once I pulled them together into a single install and provided the alt save directories, everything seemed to work quite smoothly. I didn't have any trouble having separate install folders when they were just the island to the island. I'll leave a link down in the description to the server configuration wiki where there is a lot of up-to-date details of the available command line arguments and their descriptions, as well as some examples that I've actually shown down in the video. I'll also leave a link to my previous video on how to set up a basic server if you are starting from scratch. Okay, now that we've had a look at the short way all this hangs together, let's have a look at a real world example of how I'm actually running it on my computer. And so I've downloaded the Arx Ascended dedicated server tool from the Steam interface, and this is actually what I'm using for running both of the servers that I showed in this example. Now obviously you could have files in separate folders and it will still work, but I actually found this to be quite good. Uh, the, the Steam interface allows things to update directly, so you can actually just, you know, it'll identify when there's a new uh, release out there, you just run the update straight through Steam. However, I don't launch via Steam because I find that the launch options within Steam to be very limited and I've never really bothered to try and work it out because I get a lot of freedom and control by using the bat files. Now, these two bat files that I actually have available here, they just live on my desktop so I can launch them directly. But these will then navigate through to the Steam folders launch the Arc server executable. It then has all of those question mark variables where you got your session name, your server passwords, and a few things where it just allows me to basically spawn things on top of the, the supply crates. But the main key features are, you're probably going to want a dash port. This will allow you to change the default from 7777 to something different, because if you're going to be running multiple servers, you're going to want different ports. The other key feature in here is obviously the dash cluster. I've given my cluster the name Ironbeard and then the cluster directory override. So I've got a file uh, or well, a directory on my F drive. I've basically got arc servers, clusters, and then slash Ironbeard. And so that Ironbeard folder is specific for the Ironbeard cluster that I actually wanted. We could probably go and have a look at that now. So if we grab a new folder to look at, look at our F arc servers, clusters iron bid within this we can actually see clusters and then we can see another iron bid folder and there's the actual cluster folder so it looks like it created a whole bunch of things so i possibly could have just left it at arc servers really so it created some interesting stuff but if you are working with a single folder especially if you were working with running multiple servers say for example within the steam folder you don't need to specify this cluster directory override because it will create a cluster folder within the steam folders itself and so unless you've got installs in different folders, you won't actually need this directory override. However, obviously, if you do, you want to do that. Um, as I kind of mentioned, I guess, in the, the short form of things, I had a lot of troubles where I was actually getting a mod map working with, a, with the island in terms of having them in different directories. So it's possibly a recommended thing right now until they sort that out, or unless I'm doing something wrong, uh, that you actually run things from a single install rather than having multiple folders for your, for your, your installs and instances. So with this second launch file, we got the launch bat file, the insular.bat, and we can actually see here that the directories should be identical, right? So I'm actually running the same Arc Ascended executable. The difference is that I'm calling it with the Insulana map. 
I should also have a different port number. So here we've got 7781 instead of 7779. We have the same cluster over, uh, cluster name of Ironbeard. The cluster override directory is exactly the same. Obviously you've got the mod ID so that it actually loads a mod. But the different thing that's also in here is the alt save directory name. So rather than having the first one, this one actually gets saved in the saved arcs folder. So if I go into the saved arcs, we can see the island WP. All right, so that's the, the top executable there. And then when I go back to the shooter game saved folder, we can actually see my alternate directory, which is the Insulana. Within Insulana, it actually creates a folder called Insulana. So if you actually didn't provide that override, under your saved arcs, there would be a folder here called Insulana. Let's go back to that Insulana. And then within Insulana, we can actually see that map name. So in here, we've got the Insulana underscore WP, and we can actually see the map file. And this is the thing that I actually loaded into in the uh, example earlier when I actually did these things. And so that's basically how I've hung all of these things together. And this is all running off a single install, which is the Arc Survival Ascended dedicated server which is quite good. And as I mentioned, basically under your saved config, both of those installs, both those instances that are running off the one set of files, it will be using a common set of game any files and game user setting any files. So if you wanted to have different settings for your servers, you will need to split them out into separate folders. And then you may fall foul of the problem that I had where the modded map didn't really like working with the, the island at least from a separated point of view. Once I actually put them in the same folder, it worked just like a dream. Anyway, hopefully that uh, example gives you, I guess, a little bit of clearer information on the short stuff that I did earlier. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think.